Hey friends! Some of you might remember uh, a little while ago I posted a video that I called Ask a Top Bottom, where we both answered some questions about what it's like to have a spanking fetish and live our lifestyle from two different perspectives. Um, a lot of people reached out to me to say that they enjoyed that video and wanted me to do another one like it with new and different questions. So because I am a little sucker for the things that you guys uh, ask me to do, except porn, uh, <laughs> I am uh, obliging, so I'm excited to present the second installment of Ask a Top Bottom. So, once again, a bunch of these questions have been submitted to me on social media and especially from my Patreon supporters, who I am so grateful to for partnering with me in making these videos possible in the first place. So, let's dive in. Let's go. The first question is, ah, what is your favorite secondary punishment to spanking? Okay, are you ready to go? Sign down. One, two, three. Corner time. <laughs> what we got? I wrote writing lines. Um, Jilly hates corner time because she can never stand still or be quiet. It is true. I'm a not a very calm person. Uh, but I will say this. Dan is so into corner time that I know one of his fantasies that we haven't yet had a chance to realize because I'm originally from Arizona uh, and <laughs> Dan has been to Arizona a couple of times and seen the beautiful saguaro cacti that we have in the southwest. Uh, ever since he saw that he started to fantasize about the idea of cactus time. Right. So <laughs> I wanted to get a photo of you in front of the cactus. And yeah. Um, I had trouble thinking of an answer to this one but I ended up putting writing lines. Um, it's there can be something kind of nice and even meditative about writing the same thing over and over again. Um, but I will say this, I don't think I adore any secondary punishments. You know, it's... You were just trying to think of what's easiest. You're very good at writing. You can type in very fast and you can write quickly being a writer. <laughs> um, I know you, you were just trying to think of what's easiest, least. Because well, you don't have one you're really into other than... You're very focused on one thing. <laughs> And when it comes to writing lines, there's little ways to, like I think part of the idea of writing lines is that it's meant to be boring, but I'm someone who enjoys handwriting and I actually find it quite fun to experiment with different handwriting styles. So uh, if I have to write something 50 times, I'll just write it in 50 different sets of handwriting, so. And that's why I don't make her write lines. <laughs> All right, next. All right, ready? Yes. Let's go. Number two. Do you think this sort of paraphilia is something anyone gets over or is one stuck with it for life, as it were? Mm. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? One, two, three. Ah. <laughs> Doomed. I'm sorry. <laughs> so talk about it. Um, I, 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 I just think that a sexual orientation is something that you... You can, there are people who try to deny it or I think kid themselves sometimes, but I think if you have this if you have a, a fetish, a paraphilia, there's, you're never, you can't get over it, you can't push it aside, you can't train yourself to be more into other things. It is, it is just who you are and you're stuck with it for life. I truly believe there is no way to change that. Yeah, as those of you who have watched some of my other videos probably know, I believe that my paraphilia is a sexual orientation, by which I mean it is innate, unchosen, and lifelong. Um, so I agree, it's, it's conversion therapy doesn't work, it's not something you can train away. Um, but I, I did write the word age, um, mm. because I think like any other example of a sexual orientation or, or sexual mm. interest, um, I've been told that in, in many cases people's libidos do um, ebb and flow mm -hmm. with life circumstances, mm -hmm. yeah. with how stressed they are or how busy they are, yeah. or especially how old they are. Mm -hmm. um, a number of older spanking fetishists I know have told me that they just don't crave spanking the same way they used to mm -hmm. when they were younger. So um, <laughs> while I don't think a paraphilia is something a person can change or get rid of, um, I do, I have been told that um, the, the sort of intensity of a paraphilia 
uh, can diminish with age. So, okay, next question. Ah, this is this is a really good one. Does gender matter when it comes to who you play with? Are you ready? Sure. One, two, three. Ah. Right. It says no. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm happy to play with um, with anyone. I'm happy to play. And I, I, I'm happy to play with men. I don't mind. I don't get anything from playing with men. I'm happy to play. Playing is it's fun. It's fun to play with with our friends and like I will play with men, but I don't get anything from it. Like so, it doesn't matter. But but. Yeah. He, he plays with men because... <laughs> because she likes it, exactly. And I'm, I'm perfectly happy to do it. I don't get anything from it, but I don't, it doesn't matter. I'm happy, I'm happy to do that. But yeah, I don't get anything from it. You know, I not like playing with women. So I'm different from you. Uh, I wrote not at all. Um, so I will play with anyone regardless of gender or sex. Um, but I, I do get something out of it um, in all cases. Um, Gender doesn't matter to me. Age doesn't matter. Physical appearance doesn't matter to me. Um, what matters to me is that someone is friendly and respectful. Um, it helps if someone knows how to give a good scolding. But no, sex, sex and gender absolutely don't matter at all. Ready? Next question. All right, let's go. Here we go. Can't open. All right, favorite fantasy scenario. Favorite fantasy <laughs> scenario. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I know what you're gonna write. Yeah. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. <laughs> She's written something about Star Wars, hasn't she? <laughs> so you wrote domestic. <laughs> Tell us about that. Uh, do, like, do, do, rather than a specific scenario, just domestic scenes, like domestic scenarios, domestic uh, relationships, like yeah. Oftentimes in the community, it's called domestic discipline. Yeah, domestic scenes, domestic home stuff like that's that's the see that's the kind of scene like rather than you know some people really like school stuff or sorry, domestic scenes what kind of scenario is least appealing to you least appealing to me yeah um what the let so i want it to feel really uh, obviously really disciplinary i mean anything that feels any scenario that feels that is sexually tinged like that feels like oh if it feels like erotic anything that feels comments. erotic right exactly so, so i'm so i'm less interested in yeah anything that yeah, I, it needs, I want it to be just purely disciplinary. I agree with you about erotic scenarios. I don't respond to them mm -hmm. at all. Um, but interestingly, I've noticed that I also don't respond to, very well to judicial No, I don't scenarios, either, really. Um, by which we mean uh, like judicial corporal is, punishment is, fantasies. Is that because it's a bit tricky when it comes to consent? Because judicially, they haven't actually consented. They're being forced to... No, because most of my fantasies are a bit tricky when well, it comes to I, consent. Fair enough. So let's, let's call a spade a spade. Right? Um, so it's definitely I know not what you because mean. of that. I'm not super into judicial either. I don't know why. There's something, I think I respond very strongly to hurt comfort. And there's no comfort in it. There's no comfort. Right. You know, rather than, you know, rather than um, caregiver, person being cared for, or master apprentice, or... <laughs> Where you have some sort of hurt, comfort. I'm doing this for your own good. You know, there isn't. So you like Judi domestic. judicial is very cold, isn't it? It feels very cold. Yes. Yeah, you, know you like domestic, not crazy about erotic or judicial. Um, <laughs> I wrote bad Padawan because, as those of you who have watched some of my other videos know, ever since I was like 14 years old and saw Star Wars: The Phantom Menace uh, in theaters for the first time, I. Uh, a large majority of my fantasies have revolved around a scenario where Qui-Gon Jinn spanks Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> so um, that is definitely my favorite fantasy. Does that come up in all your videos? Yes. <laughs> all right, it's your turn to pick. All right, let's do this. Are you sure? I thought it was my one. Well, why not? Okay. Do you enjoy punishments? Okay, before we flip these around, in case there's anyone who has uh, wandered into this uh, channel unknowingly without mm -hmm. having seen any videos that I've done before, I just want to say, calm down, Carol. When we say punishments, we are, of course, talking about consensual ones. So, one, two, three. Yeah. Uh, so you wrote in theory. In, Tell us about that. In theory. So, obviously... All, I 
my fantasies are all punishment based, right? So, yeah. in, and so punishments in what get me does in theory gets me get, get me most excited. When the thing is, when uh, punishments are amazing when you uh, thinking about that they're going to happen, and they're amazing in hindsight when you think about them. At the actual time, like when I'm really when I'm really scolding you, or let's say this is a punishment for a, a real thing, and I'm scolding you, and I'm really thinking about it. Like at that moment, like I'm not enjoying that I feel like I have to give you a punishment, a consensual one, obviously. Um, I'm not enjoying that I, you know, I do like it when you're good, well behaved, and I don't have to punish you. And so like, I don't always necessarily enjoy it at the time. It sometimes feel like, like I really get into the feeling of that I'm doing, like I'm trying to feel like I'm working, like I'm trying to like help you and I'm not doing it because I'm enjoying it or something. I'm doing it because I think it's, you know, for your own good. Um, so in theory, I think my feelings are really similar. I wrote yes and no because, um, of course, I don't like it in the moment, uh, but I do like being in a disciplinary dynamic, which we are. I find knowing that um, that's the relationship that I'm in very satisfying. So, uh, yeah, I think I could have said in theory also. Yeah, absolutely. Love to be in a relationship which has it, but obviously, in the moment, in the it's moment. not always so fun. No. Okay. Let's go. Next one is... Make it a good one. Uh, least favorite implement. Easy. Okay, before the, we flip these around, uh, last night we reviewed these questions so we could think about what we wanted our answers to be, but we did not uh, compare notes. So he doesn't know what I'm writing and I don't know what he's writing. But last night you did say you thought our answers were going to be the same. Do you still think that's true? Yes. All right, well, let's see if it is. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah. Um, yeah, floggers. Um, they, to me, they look so performative. They feel, they feel erotic, you know? They feel like a toy. Like, it's like a type of play. And that makes it not feel disciplinary and domestic -y and. Yeah, I think um, I'm, I associate floggers with more general BDSM play um, with that branch of the kink tree. Um, and not so much with spankings or with the spanko branch of the tree. Uh, and like we were saying before, we tend to like fantasies that err on the side of um, domestic or educational or, you know, uh, in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> and uh, none of those are contexts in which you yeah. see a flogger. So, um, yeah, not a fan. Yeah, well. Okay, next question Let's is... Go. Hmm. How often, ideally, would you engage in spanking? Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> daily. I knew every, you were daily. Every damn day. I would have written daily also if mentally engaging, because the question was how often would you engage in spanking? Um, the, if, in, if mentally engaging with it includes, if, if that counts, then my answer would be daily also. That no, 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 doesn't mean you have to have like serious scenes every day. You know, a lot of these can, yeah, be, can fun be fun. And I want, I definitely want to spank you every day. It's my main aim in life, actually. <laughs> um, I wouldn't, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't be opposed to daily. And I definitely considered writing it. I ended up writing four to five times a week. Well, um, I mean, it hurts for you, you know. So it's, 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 but but they're, they're what like know, good girl spankings don't absolutely, hurt. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, so I don't know. <laughs> Four or five times a week sounds good. So you've got a couple of days off. I'm gonna I'm gonna add a question mark to it because now I'm doubting what I've written. Um, maybe this isn't enough, especially if I'm thinking about like bedtime spankings or good girl. Spankings you want bedtime or, spankings every day, sure. Yeah, exactly. So it's probably daily for both of us. I'm just trying to mix it up. <laughs> All right. Yes. All right. Next question. So bad. Okay. Do you have any other kinks? Mm. One, two, three. Aha! I nailed it because I wrote no, but he does. So let's hear about this. <laughs> sure. Um, so there are two fetishes, only two. Spanking and discipline. They are the core fetishes. They're the obligatory fetishes. I need them in my life. I have to have them. And, but I, there are some other kinks. Like I have, uh, I definitely have a bit of a humiliation kink. That's um, what I was thinking of when I wrote this. And I have some, I have a kink for like, I like, um, I like 
I, I can get quite into quite a lot of activities which don't like, which wouldn't traditionally be thought of as sexual, but which involve some like, some, which are quite intimate. Like I'm thinking now, rather than spanking, things like inspections, examinations, that sort of thing. Um, you know, where there's like touching, but it's not overtly sexual, not how, what people would consider sexual. So yeah, I've got a few, yeah. He's definitely got a little bit of a humiliation kink. And sometimes I feel kind of bad for him because at this point, considering the work I do and the videos I post on the internet, which is public, uh, I, I think I might be a little bit immune to humil humiliation because I spend enough time humiliating myself. So. Jenny doesn't get embarrassed, that's true. Right. Okay. Okay. You go. Let's go. Okay, next question is, to what degree is the DS dynamic integrated into your life? Mm -hmm. uh, and since this question was submitted by one of my Patreon supporters, I know that this person threw out a few examples like, do you tell me what to wear? Right. Um, things like that, so. Ready? Okay, one, two, three. Hmm. Um, should I go first? Yep. I wrote constant but low level. So I think people, like, our relationship is based on, you know, we have this DS dynamic and it is all the time. Like, mm -hmm. it is 24 hours a day. It is all the time. Um, and I do, you know, punish you for real things and I do feel a real responsibility to look after you in a, diff in a way that I don't think other people who aren't in this kind of dynamic feel. Um, but, like, for example, I don't get involved with your, your work, for example. I always say anything that's to do with your work has nothing to do with me. Yeah. Um, work stuff. Uh, I don't tell you what to wear, like, you know, that kind of thing. Like that's, you know, so I like. You don't micromanage. I don't know, no, that's exactly, I don't micromanage at all. As in, I don't, I don't waste my moral authority on things that aren't important. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, I concentrate mainly on health and safety things and health, like mainly health and safety things, that kind of stuff. You know, things that aren't important, I don't, I don't like waste my energy on trying to, you know. I wrote rarely because I think something that's nice, that's something that's nice for me about being in a full-time DS dynamic like we are, even if it is one that is um, low level as you wrote, is that there definitely have been times when I have asked you to step into that kind of role uh, in specific moments. Like I'm thinking there have been times when I was really stressed out or overwhelmed and I just couldn't decide but, what to eat for dinner. That happens a lot, actually. And, uh, <laughs> it happens a lot. Like. And so we've been doing the thing that I think a lot of couples do, where we're like, where should we go for dinner? I don't know, what do you think? I don't know, what do you think? And there are moments when I'm just like, I need you to decide, and then he decides. You, you do that a lot, even when you're not around, even when you're somewhere else, you text me. Like, no, I think it happens more Make a decision, that happens, that happens a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's lots, and, and there, are, like, there are some set things that I'm like, you know, that you would check with me before doing that kind of stuff, but I don't, yeah, I don't get involved in love. My go? Yep. Let's do it. Ah, do you have sex? <laughs> uh, anyone who is new to this channel knows that I spend a lot of time talking about my disinterest in sex. So, do we have it? One, two, three. Oh, you're in. Yes, we do, occasionally. <laughs> like, yeah, sure, now and again, but not that often, just because we just don't care. Like, um... So I wrote, <laughs> do we? <laughs> because, well, yes, definitely we have had sex in the traditional sense. Um, as I defined in an earlier video, uh, I defined sex in a pretty boring way. Um, that's genital, anal, and oral sex. So we have had sex, but I think because we're both so kind of bored of it, that I don't think the sex that we do have would be recognized by most people as sex. And it's always very functional. It, it's like in moments when uh, someone just needs to have an orgasm, but we are camping in a tent and there's another tent next, right next to us and we can't make loud slapping sounds and somebody just needs to come. So we get it done. It's like yeah. doing a job. Yeah, it, yeah, hmm. yeah. Okay. Next question is, at what point in a friendship do you feel comfortable telling people about your fetish? Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. Go. Yeah. Wait, you wrote whenever they ask, but when, who, 
Who is ever why, like, I, are you a fetishist? I didn't know how to uh, write this. So People don't ask that. Well, I didn't mean to have, like, so the thing is, like, I'm always happy to, like, I'm always happy, that, like, if anyone, if the topic ever goes that direction, if we've been talking enough that it even goes vaguely that direction, or they ask what you do, or they ask about... That, or they ask, like, what you're into. Yeah, yeah. They're like, or anything, then, I, then I'm always happy to talk about it. But, like, you know, I, you know I, I spend a lot of time in Britain, and you can't just, like... <laughs> You can't just like hit British people with that stuff straight away. They, they, they find that very difficult, <laughs> very difficult, you know. Um, um, but all my friends, all my friends who have been friends with for any amount of time, like I'm more happy to, you know, I'm always happy to talk about it. And I, I actually, I bring it up to my friends too, but. So I wrote, what's your job? <laughs> because the truth is I try to, I, I, I like to avoid the topic in a lot of contexts. Um, I, in many cases, I'd rather not talk about it because I spend a lot of my life writing about spanking and making videos about spanking and certainly talking about spanking, responding to emails about spank. Oh my God, all of the emails every day. Um, so the truth is in many social contexts, when I meet new friends or I'm at a party, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I'm tired. I want to talk about cats. She does want to keep making videos. Like <laughs> don't worry. Um, I want to talk about cats and, and food and other things. Um, but the question, what is your job, is always tricky because I say I'm a nonfiction writer. And they say, what do you write? And I say, I wrote a book. And, you know, it's just all downhill from there very quickly. So uh, the truth is it, it comes up in my friendships like unfortunately fast. My go? Yep, you pick it. All right, let's do it. What is more important, the pain or the ritual? Mm. Easy one. One, two, three. Yes. This is definitely course. a match, I'm sure of it, yeah. Well, I mean, he doesn't feel any pain, so. <laughs> no, right, for me. No, no, no. I just but actually, the your hand. Are... If you're, if... No, it doesn't hurt my hand. I've been doing this for a lot. Mine doesn't hurt my hand. It's going to be ridiculous. Um, there, are, there are Spanko tops who, um, who are also like, who, are, who have some sadism. Like, they do get, they do get something oh, out of the yeah. pain. No, that's there right. are sadistic yeah. um, Spanko tops, and that's completely fine. Um, I'm not one of them. The pain is not important to me. Whether I cause pain, I don't get pleasure from the causing pain. I'm into the ritual. I'm into the spanking and the, the look of it and the feel of it and everything. But yeah, the pain doesn't matter to me. I couldn't agree more. This question is very specific. Uh, what is the wheelbarrow position like? Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Oh, wow! <laughs> I didn't expect this to be such a... That's pretty... Almost use the same word. Such a clear pretty match. Close. So you wrote too sexual. I do... Like, I do like... I do quite like embarrassing positions, you know? But the problem with wheelbarrow is it stops feeling disciplinary. If it feels disciplinary and is embarrassing... Like, I do like other... Like, quite a few like different positions. But wheelbarrow, it just doesn't seem to be any disciplinary purpose. It's not a very, like... It is not a yeah. I just it just doesn't feel disciplinary, and that makes it feel erotic, and that means I'm not really interested. And that's why I we don't read it. So I wrote seems too erotic because the truth is I've actually never tried the wheelbarrow position. Uh, in fact, I'm not entirely sure I know what it is. So maybe for all of our educational purposes, including my own, we will in post production edit in a visual of what but, uh, exactly the wheelbarrow position is. If I'm correct with what I imagine, I think it seems too erotic for me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I'm sure it's a nice view as a top, but it's not, I haven't done it with you because I'm just not that interested. Cause it, you have know. you done it ever with anyone? Yeah, I have. Oh, you have? Like, I have done it. Like, I've tried, oh. you know, but it's, okay. yeah, but it's not. Not your fave. It's just not that disciplinary. I don't, yeah. Okay. And the last question is. Drum roll. Yeah. You can do the drum roll. I'm the drum roll. Brilliant, perfect. Do you switch? I get this question. She gets this question every, every day. single day in every my day. email, in YouTube comments. The internet needs to know. Do you switch, Do Jilly? we switch? Okay, the long awaited answer to the question Here it comes. This of whether we switch. One, two, three. Yeah. I'll, I'll keep mine short, very short. I don't switch. Um, I'm, I'm just a top. I'm very boring. But no, I'm just, I'm just a top. I don't switch. 
I, pro I am what I call a service switch, by which I mean I don't naturally uh, fantasize about topping. And while I, I, I don't think I get much out of the act of topping itself. I don't think I get anything out of topping for its own sake. However, my friends are so flipping important to me. And if I'm at a party and a girlfriend of mine says she hasn't played in a while or is feeling frustrated um, because no one is asking her to play. Although, to be honest, I don't know why I said girlfriend because I'm happy to mm -hmm. help out my friends of all genders. Mm -hmm. um, in that case, I love topping them and I get something out of it because I feel like I'm helping a friend out. So although I haven't heard the term service switch before, I'm sure it exists, um, I think of myself as a service switch. If I'm doing a yep. friend a favor yep. by topping, then not only am I happy to top, I am eager to top. Right, so I guess for friends you will top, but you are not a top. Yes, absolutely. Well now the internet knows. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching this new installment of our little game show that we've created. I hope you enjoyed it. And hey, if you all want a third video, keep the questions coming. I have no privacy filter, so <laughs> I will answer anything. Thanks for watching.